everyone. Thank you for coming out to the Building Outlook add-ins like Lightning for Outlook and the Salesforce Inbox add-ins. My name is Wumwe the Mina, and I'm a program manager at Microsoft on the Outlook ecosystem team. And so today, I wanted to spend some time talking to you a little bit about what Office add-ins are, what's new, what we've been working on, and then I'm going to spend probably the majority of my session showing you how to get started building an add-in from the very beginning until a finished product. It's gonna be a little quick, but hopefully we'll be able to get through it. And then at the end, I'll give you guys some final timelines. So the most important piece of all of this is what are add-ins? Why did we build this platform? Well, the reason we built it is because we wanted add-ins to help people get their work done faster. And I think that this is something everyone tries and strives to do. And with our Office add-in platform, we were able to empower our Office users. This way, they can be more productive in their Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever it is that they may need to use. And so before we go in any further, I'd kind of like to know who's out there. How many of you guys have maybe heard of the Office add-in platform? OK, a couple people. And how many of you guys have used an Office add-in? Maybe Lightning for Outlook? Salesforce inbox. Okay, have any of you guys tried building an add-in? Have any of you actually built an add-in? Okay, I see like one or two maybe out there. Okay, which is good because we're gonna start at the very beginning of talking about what is an Office add-in. And here, since I'm on the Outlook team, I'm gonna focus on Outlook add-ins. Uh, the idea here is that there is an add-in which the best way to think about it is, is as a web page that's running inside of your application. And so that add-in could appear in a couple different ways, and I'll show you them in a few minutes. The idea is that it could appear in a task pane on the right-hand side, or it may be embedded in that message or appointment that you're looking at. And what do you need to build these add-ins? Well, just need standard web technologies. For the user interface, you could use HTML5, you could use CSS, um, and for the behavior, you can get leverage JavaScript and jQuery. So what makes this special, what makes this different, is that we've also created client APIs for you to utilize. So you can access core item properties and re when you're reading a message or composing a message. And we've done this with the exposure of office.js, so we've created our own APIs that you can call. So now that we have a little bit of knowledge on what an add-in is, what components make up an add-in? So if you were a developer and you were gonna start building it, there are two main components that you need to consider. The first we've touched on a little bit, that add-in web page, which is that HTML and JavaScript and leveraging our client APIs. The second part, and this is a very key piece, is the XML-based manifest. This part is a little bit confusing, and you'll see why when I show you later on in the demos. But it's a key piece because it tells us where that web page is gonna be. It also tells us exactly what your add-in is gonna do. Is it gonna activate when you're reading messages or composing them? What APIs does it rely on? How is it gonna appear? Is it gonna be a task pane? Maybe it's a dropdown. So all of these things are important pieces that you tell us what you want your add-in to do in that XML-based manifest. And the last piece is, this is how users actually install your add-in. This is how it appears in their mailbox. We store this manifest. Okay, so I mentioned that through the XML-based manifest, you can tell us exactly how you want items to appear. And we have a couple different extension points that you can leverage inside of Outlook. I'm gonna touch on three of them. The first one is gonna be a command. And this is the most generic one. This is what everyone generally thinks of when they think of an add-in. If you'll notice on the screen here, I have Wonderlist showing here, and there's two buttons that are showing in the ribbon, that main section where you can take an action on your messages. And the idea here is you can specify, do you want this command to launch a task pane on that right-hand side? Do you want it to simply execute JavaScript and require no user input? The next type of extension point we have is a contextual extension point. This extension point is a little bit different and then you tell us what entity you're looking for in a message. So whether that's an address, maybe a meeting suggestion, or some regular expression match that you specify, 
you're able to have us look for that in the message and activate and launch the add-in from here. As you can see here, we've created a hyperlink on this one Microsoft way, and when you press it, it opens this pop-up that the add-in is able to load inside of. The final extension point I'm going to touch on is module. For those of you who may not be familiar with what a module is, Think of it when you're switching between mail and calendar, tasks and contexts. Those are each Outlook modules. And you can build your own add-in that will create its own separate module, which has a much bigger UX. And you can define all of your commands that you want individually inside of that module. OK, so enough talk. I'm telling you guys all about these awesome add-ins. Let me switch on over to showing you some of the add-ins that exist today. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start. This is Desktop Outlook 2016, and I'm in a mailbox for our person here is Joel. And so I'm gonna start by showing you Wanderlist. And for those of you who might not be familiar with Wanderlist, it's this idea that you can create task lists, to-do lists for you. And in your email, you get a bunch of tasks on a daily basis, so it would be great if you could put them in your own task list to help keep you organized. And so Wonderless came up with two commands. The first command that they created is this task pane. This is that right-hand side. This is where you would see Lightning for Outlook appear or Salesforce inbox, right? And they've also leveraged some of our JavaScript APIs. You can notice here the Q3 meeting update was actually populated from the subject of the message. Additionally, they pulled in the body of the message. Now maybe this message didn't have all the information that I needed, so they've also made it possible for me to add additional details here. And once I'm finished and I've added everything necessary and all that I want to include, I can go ahead and add this to Wonderlist. Tells me it's successfully added, right? Okay, so that's great, only that's a long process. I have to click on the task pane, make sure all the information is right. What if all of that information is already included in my email? Well, Wonderlist thought of that as well. And so what they did is they leveraged what we call UI list commands. And what that essentially means is that it's just gonna execute some JavaScript in the background. There's not gonna be any user input required. And so Wonderlist says some smart, on the background here, and they determine where they're gonna add it. But if I press quick add here, you'll notice it's executing the JavaScript. You see a spinner there that's telling you, hey, we're working on your request, working on it, working on it. And once it's completed, we show you a success message. This way, even though there is no real UI attributed with this command, the user is still able to understand, hey, yep, everything went okay. Now I'm gonna switch gears. We've seen desktop Outlook. I'm gonna switch over to our Outlook on the web. And here, you'll notice, again, we have add-in surface. Here's my wonder list. It's in a slightly different location, and why is that? It's because it's a different client. Uh, we don't have the concept of a ribbon here. And you could imagine if we put all of those different commands that you had up in that main blue bar, it would get cluttered really fast. So we put it in the next best spot, right next to that reply all function. So for this one, I'm gonna showcase Salesforce inbox. And in this case, Joel's already set up. He's already added his Salesforce credentials. And so it's gonna automatically start pulling that information from Salesforce directly into Outlook for him. And so he has me, one way the minor, as a contact. And if he needs to figure out some extra information about me or create a record, maybe a task, he's able to do that all right here. Right? Maybe he forgot, what's my role at Microsoft? Oh, she's a program manager. He can easily access all this information. He never has to leave Outlook. The other thing that he can do is he can log this email so he can relate it to me. And it, by just simply pressing this button, it's gonna take all that information and update it for him inside of Salesforce. Right? So he's able to get everything done. He didn't have to leave. He's been much more productive. He didn't have to switch back and forth. Now, one of the awesome things that I didn't call out originally about this add-in platform is if you notice, Wonderlist was in my desktop Outlook. Wonderlist is also in my Outlook on the web. One of the great benefits of building this Outlook add-in is that it's gonna be available on every single Outlook client that supports add-ins. And today that's Outlook Desktop 2013, 2016, Mac Outlook 2016, and Outlook on the web. So writing your Office add-in will mean that it will work and function in all of those different clients. 
The last sample that I wanted to show you today is just that live contextual piece. So you'll notice here, this email also contained an address and it's automatically hyperlinked that address for us. And if I press on it, again, you can see this pop-up that appears, it's gonna load Bing Maps. Now, you might be thinking, okay, this is Bing Maps, not necessarily super useful, but you can imagine other use cases, right? You can imagine, hey, maybe I have case numbers, a special way that I map my case numbers, and if I clicked on that case number in my message, I would get the regular context for that case that I'm looking at. Um, so you can define your own regular expressions that you wanna look at, or you can use known entities that we have, which are addresses, meeting suggestions, phone numbers, things like that. So getting back into the slides, let's spend a little bit of time talking about what's new. We've been working on this platform for a while now, and one of the things that we were most pleased to announce at Ignite last week is that we're bringing commands to Outlook on Mac and Outlook on the web, as I just showcased for you previously. Now, if you're interested in building and learning more about Outlook Mac, you can join the Office Insider Fast program for Mac. And so, as you'll notice here, Mac Outlook is this top picture. It looks very similar to Desktop Outlook. The entry point is quick, it's discoverable, it's right there when I need it. The next thing we've done is we've made it easier for our users to manage those add-ins. So we've provided this store experience in this second screenshot right here. And what that means is now it's really simple for me to turn on and off add-ins. So if I don't decide that I don't wanna use an add-in or I, hey, I really need lightning for Outlook, I can go and simply with the press of a button turn it on easily. And the last thing, we've gotten many, many requests for this, it's the pinnable task pane. So it's this idea that if I'm using Lightning for Outlook and I use it on a majority of my mails, I want the opportunity to not have to click on that button every single time as I'm switching through my messages. It's kind of annoying, kind of frustrating. Wouldn't it be great if I could just press a button and it would pin that task pane open on the right-hand side? So as I switch between each message, it's going to contextually update my lightning for Outlook and say, okay, on this message, here's your sender, here's all the relevant information, the cases, the leads, everything. So you don't have to continuously go back and relaunch the add-in. So with that, we have a good idea of what we have today, what's coming. I wanna show you guys how to build an add-in. Now, if you're just starting out building an add-in, the first thing I always tell people is, go to dev.outlook.com. It's the best way to get the documentation, code samples, anything you need to go ahead and get started. So if I scroll down here, you'll see we have a bunch of different options, Outlook add-in, connectors for Outlook, Outlook REST APIs. And so I'm gonna go ahead, and, since we're starting with Outlook add-ins, and press that. So in this case, it already gives me directions on how to immediately get started. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Yo a Yeoman generator to start us off. And it's gonna allow me to go ahead and quickly create a manifest, that confusing bit that I mentioned earlier. And so while we're waiting for that to load, we're gonna think about what questions this might ask us. It's basically saving us from having to deal with XML. It's gonna ask us exactly what we want. What type of add-in is it that we want to build? In our case, we're gonna to wanna to build a mail add-in. So I'm just gonna title this my add-in. It's gonna ask me where I want the files to go. And again, like I mentioned, it's gonna ask me what type of add-in I want. In this case, I want a mail add-in. Next, it says, okay, what type of technology are you going to use? And I'm gonna focus on the manifest. Now, here's the key piece. Where do you want this to activate? Do you want it to activate when you're reading messages, composing them? Do you want it to activate on events? What do you want it to activate on? For our purposes in the demo today, I'm gonna to go ahead and just say we want it to appear in message read. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a URL. And this is gonna prompt me with another question. It's gonna say, do you want it to appear, all those commands that you're gonna create, do you want them to appear on their own custom tab or a default tab? Now, that might sound confusing initially, and the reason why we called it the default tab is because it's named differently if you're composing a message or reading a message. But all that means is, 
If I look at my desktop outlook, do I want it to be here on the default tab, the tab that users are gonna see? Or maybe I have many, many commands that I need my user to leverage, and so I should create my own custom tab that I can title after the add-in and users can use as their own separate piece. So our purpose is we're probably only gonna build a couple commands today. I'm just gonna say put it on the default tab. Okay, so now we know where it is, where it's gonna appear. What type of button is it? Do we want a task pane? Do we want a drop down? Do we want it to just execute JavaScript? So it's asking you all of these questions and it's gonna create a control for you inside the manifest that's gonna allow you to leverage each of these shapes. So for us, I'm gonna say, we're just gonna start with a task pane. That's probably the easiest place for us to start. Now if I continued to go through this flow, it would eventually come up with the manifest that I would need to leverage. But I've already created my own project in Visual Studio, so I'm gonna switch over to that now. Now, if you have Visual Studio and you wanted to start creating a project here, you could do a similar thing. File, come on, new project, and once you select the project, my computer is being irritable, um, once you select the project, there's a section that says office slash SharePoint, and under that, there's a section for web add-ins, and there's templates provided for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, and you can create just a template, a base template for you to start building. So what I did is I created the Outlook add-in template here. And it gave me a manifest, and of course, I've gone ahead and I've added additional detail here, and I'm gonna step you through it now. So, as expected, it's not pretty, and <laughs> as you continue going down, what I'm gonna call your attention to is version overrides. For those commands that we're talking about, those ones that are gonna appear in the ribbon, those are gonna be all under the version override section. So when you're working and developing, that's the section that you need to pay attention to. Above that is our legacy section, our old model that we had for add-ins prior to commands. Inside of the version override section, you'll notice a couple of things. Those extension points I talked about here. Remember I mentioned the command extension point? When we specified that we wanted a message read command extension point, this is what it did. It defined message read command surface. That's where your add-in's going to appear. It could say message compose, command, etc. Inside of that, you're gonna wanna have controls. That's this section here. So if I scroll down a little bit, you see that it's a button, it has icons, but the important key piece is gonna be that action. That action tells us, hey, this is gonna show a task pane. It's not gonna execute JavaScript, it's gonna show a task pane. And so underneath that, we provide the source location, and you might be thinking, okay, that's a resource ID, not a source location. But that's because we put all of our resources at the bottom, all of your URLs, all of your strings, you can add them to the bottom of the manifest and simply reference them using a resource ID. So in our manifest, we've defined that we want it to show up on a message read uh, in Outlook, and we've defined that we want a task pane. Now we need to actually decide what the task pane is gonna do. And for the purposes of this demo, I've decided let's go ahead and build a Trello add-in. How many of you guys are familiar with Trello? Anybody use it? Yeah, so the idea here, I have got it open for Trello is gonna be that you kind of can manage different projects and boards. So let's say I have project A, B, and C, I can create separate boards for them and then add tasks to each of those boards. Those tasks we refer to as cards. And those cards you can add descriptions to to know what needs to be done. So if I select this card, Contoso Project, it has some details here and I could add additional comments. But the benefit of it is, is that you can create different ways through the pipeline. So you might start at the backlog into in, progress, in review, completed, and so you can see the status of each task as you're going through. So, since email is full of a bunch of tasks that we get, why not incorporate that into your email so that you can automatically just take those tasks that you get for your project and add them directly to your Trello account. So, I've gone ahead and create, wrote two functions. The first is add card. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, we wanna add a card, but first we wanna check to make sure you're authenticated. If you're not authenticated, we're gonna go ahead and prompt you to authenticate. 
And second, I created a create card function. So this is gonna be that part where we ask the user to input the card name, the card description, and then once they're done with all of that, press the add card button in the task pane. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this, and it's gonna prompt me, it's gonna show me Outlook on the web, and it's gonna ask me to go ahead and sign in. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy my username. It's gonna sign me in, and what we should see is, remember, this is still Joel's account. What we should see now is when we select a message, there's gonna be a new add-in that's gonna appear. So let's go ahead and select that message. Wait for the add-ins to load. And sure enough, here's a new command that's appeared. If I select this command, a task pane's gonna open, and I can now type the card name and the card description. So I can send an update. Send before coffee sink. And I can go ahead and press add card. Now remember I said, it's gonna first check to see if you're authenticated. This is the first time I've used Trello maybe, right? So it's gonna ask me to log in, provide my Trello account. And then it's gonna ask me to give permissions. So once I've done that, it's gone ahead and added that card. So now if I switch back over to Trello, you can see that send update that I just created is already on my Trello board, right? Okay. Now, similar to Wonderlist, it's great that we can use this task pane, but wouldn't it be even better if all of my information was already in the email and I could just automatically press a button and it went to Trello for me? So let's go ahead and dive into building that UI list button. So switching back over here, we need to first define that control. So I'm gonna switch back over to the manifest and go ahead and define that. And I've gone ahead and created some code snippets here, so it's just gonna kind of jump in there. You'll notice it's still a button, but the important piece again is that action. It doesn't say show task pane anymore. Instead it says execute function. And it asks us to tell it which function it is that we want to execute. And so in our case, we still wanna add a card. So I'm gonna say, go ahead and say, okay, the function's gonna be called add card. Now, you might be wondering, okay, great, we gave it a function name. How does it know what function to call? A little bit further up in the manifest, let me scroll up, there's a section right here, function file. And this is when you have a UI list command, all of those functions that you're gonna define, they need to go in that function file. And so, again, you're gonna provide the location of that file in the resource section at the bottom of the manifest. But this is a very key piece when using the UI list. Okay, so now we've added the control. It should appear for us, but it's not gonna do anything. So let's switch on over to actually creating these functions. And I've already started again with the add card function. And this is just gonna make sure that we're authenticated. The piece that we need to change is how we're gonna create that card. In the past, we were relying on users to go ahead and input that information. But at least that's a good place for us to start. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that create card function that we already had and paste it over here. But as we mentioned, we actually need to decide what we're gonna populate that card name and description with. And so in this case, what the most logical thing to me seemed to be was, let's use the message subject and the message body. And we can do that because we're using our Office JS APIs. And so, let me add my next code snippet here. You'll see that we've gone ahead and added and access the subject by using office.context.mailbox.item.subject. And we've done a similar thing with the body, item.body.getAsync. And so once we've gotten those actions, we've saved them to variables. Now we just need to update the card name and description so they're not requiring user input. I'm gonna go ahead and update both of them. Okay, and so now we don't require the user input. There's one key piece that might be missed with UI lists, and that is that you need to let us know when your function is finished running. See, in the task pane, the user can close it, or when they switch to a new message, we automatically close that task pane. But for UI lists, we rely on you to tell us, hey, we're done, we successfully completed it, or no, there was an issue, and message that and bubble that back up to us. And so the way that we do that is we 
pass in this event object here. And once you're finished, so once it's a success, we're gonna go ahead and call event.completed. And so if I didn't add this event.completed, what would happen? It would mean that if a user used the UI list, they clicked the button, and then later on they tried to send a message that they used the UI list on, they would get this frustrating pop-up that says, hey, there's an add-in running on this, are you sure you wanna send this anyway? Now if your action's already completed, now the user's confused. I thought, I thought this was done, why is it prompting me again? So we wanna make sure that you guys add this event.completed. But with that event.completed, we should be good to go now. We should have our UI list implemented. Uh-oh. So, what should happen now is we should see a second command appear when we la select on a message. So let's go ahead and select. Oops, nope, so let's go back. Let's see what I, what I missed it. I have my event.completed. I have my body.getSubject. Going back over here, let's see what it says. Okay, so I'm just gonna try one more time and see. So what should happen is that it's gonna go ahead and deploy for me and it's gonna say, hey, the response received from the service didn't contain valid XML. So I need to go back and take a look at my manifest and see what's going on here. We've gone ahead and we've defined one control. That's the first one here, from here to here. That's executing UI lists. It's gonna execute a function add card. And we have our second one, which is a task pane. Oh. Let me double check, I think so. Yeah, I don't know, of course this happens. <laughs> so I practice this so many times, guys, but I do know what's going on right now. So let me go ahead and just start from scratch really quick again. Let me go back and get it working and then try and add again. So. No, something's wrong. So it's unable to actually showcase it, but what should have happened is that a second button would have appeared for me and it would have gone ahead and sh executed my JavaScript. So the idea here is that when I'm in Outlook on the web and I have multiple commands being surfaced, I'm gonna use Wonderlist in this example, I'm gonna get a little bit of a drop down here that's gonna prompt me for the two options. And the next key piece that we're gonna talk about is if I'm using UI lists, I need to make sure that I provide the user with feedback once it's completed. So not only do you need to tell Outlook that it's gone ahead and completed the function, you also need to provide us with something to tell the user. And we've done that, we've provided that capability. And I'm gonna show you over here with the ability to leverage our notification messages API. And so what you would do is you would do office.context.mailbox dot item dot notification messages. And here you can provide us with what type of message that's gonna be. Is it an error message? Maybe something went wrong. Is it a progress info bar? Maybe you just know your action's gonna take a little longer. Or is it a success? You could leverage informational. And so we already kind of witnessed what that looks like when we leverage desktop outlook here, you can see this is an example of that notification message. So we're able to surface that success to the user. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna switch gears. We've kind of built our add-in with the exception of that deployment issue. Um, but 
that's not the only piece of it. It's not just knowing how to leverage the APIs. It's not just knowing that you need to manifest and how to define all of those commands. It's gonna be important for you guys, and I'm gonna talk about this very briefly, to think through it from start to finish. We like to think that when you're building an Outlook ad, and there are three main pieces, and that first piece is gonna be defining that scenario. You wanna make sure that whatever that scenario is, is gonna provide deep value for your users. And so they use it on a regular basis. Then you can start building that experience, leveraging those commands, thinking through what extension point is it that I need to enable my users to do what I want. And then finally, thinking through, hey, I wanna provide them with a great UI. I want them to be able to feel like they're using something that's easy to use, they understand it. And so thinking through all of these to make a great end experience is gonna be key for your success when building an add-in. So we've talked about what add-ins are, we've seen how you can build those add-ins. I wanna spend some time talking about where we are headed. We, as a platform, are continuing to grow. We continue to add new stuff on. And I mentioned at the beginning that we have all of these features that are gonna start rolling out. So those add-in commands for Mac and Outlook on the web, those are gonna be starting to roll out to our users in about one to two months. And we're gonna to continue to work to bring that parity across all of those clients so that you can have the same awesome experience in all of them. The next thing that I mentioned was that pinnable task pane. Now that's gonna to come to desktop Outlook first. And in desktop Outlook, that's gonna be in about one to two months that the experience is gonna start rolling out. And assuming that the add-ins support, add support for this persistence or this pinning, it should start working for those users on Outlook 2016. And shortly after that, we're gonna to wanna to bring that same functionality to Mac Outlook, as well as Outlook on the web. So we've got quite a bit of work coming up for us in the next few months. But for you guys who wanna go ahead and get started, I've provided a bunch of different links, a bunch of information on how you can go ahead and get started. So there's samples that you can view on dev.outlook.com, there's the starting page that I showed you, that landing. We have references to all of the APIs. You can see which API requirement sets are required to do what you want to do. But the piece that I want to call attention to is at the very bottom, that user voice feedback. We're always working to grow and develop our platform. And we want to enable scenarios that our users are going to find valuable. So if you're going through and you realize that there's some functionality that we don't have that you need, feel free to tell us on user voice. We regularly monitor it, and we want to continue to grow that platform. And so with that, thank you guys for coming and attending this session. I'm definitely open for questions. There's a mic in the middle of the room if you guys have any. Yes? One question, so I'm not quite sure I understand where the manifest and function files reside. They must reside on server since you're providing access through the web interface as well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking specifically in exchange terms right now. Mm -hmm. So I did see something in there that says they reside in the user mailbox, but I didn't understand it. So the manifest itself, when you when a user goes to install that manifest, it gets installed to their Exchange mailbox. So it's associated with their account. And so after that, we would, when you load up Outlook, we go ahead and we set check to see um, how many add-ins are available. Sorry, the question was in general. So uh, that how do how does the manifest tell us that the what add-ins are installed? And so. Once we pull down that information, we then use those source locations that you provide to us to reference and show and load that web page that's going to be in the task pane. Did that answer? Yeah, pretty much, but that means that someone who doesn't have admin access to the Exchange server or just a group of users does not have the ability to develop these mechanisms or establish, right? Someone would have to install them for us. Um, so that depends on how your admin has kind of set up your account. So again, the question was, if I've gone ahead as an individual user and I want to try installing an add-in, can I do that? And so it depends on how your admin has set it up. If you look in Outlook, let me see if I can show you. There is a section that allows you to add custom add-ins, like if you want to test it out. Um, there's different admins can set different types of permissions on whether you have this store button that appears for you or not. They can set, hey, our add-ins have different permission levels depending on what APIs they're using. So they can say, oh, we don't want you to be able to install an add-in that has read-write mailbox privileges. And so it's really all dependent on how they've configured it for you. Um, 
But if they haven't restricted you, you can click on the store, and it should load here. And there's this click here to add a custom add-in. So if I selected here, I could add from a URL or from a file, and I could install my own personal add-in. And we should be able to see that for the Mac in one to two months. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I just had a quick one. Uh, so what's the minimum platform support requirement that I need in a client environment to actually use this technology? So for the Office add-ins, you need to have at least Exchange 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is going to work for Outlook 2013 and above. Any other questions, thoughts? Was it pretty simple? What did you guys think? Yeah, pretty easy to get started? <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. We're working on being agile. It's <laughs> big company. <laughs> yes.